In this video, I will show you how to trace patterns from a book. So I looked through a pattern book and I selected this particular pattern piece because it's a one piece combination with the front and the back. But obviously this applies to any pattern that you choose. It's just that you might choose multiple patterns if you have a front, back, sleeve, uh, various components like a collar or pockets. But I wanted to do one garment with one particular pattern. So let's start with an empty screen window and we're going to bring in an avatar. So I'm going to left click on avatar. I'm going to go for a female avatar since this is a women's shirt and I'm going to select um, this particular avatar. She's loading up. That's Grace. And now I'm going to bring in my pattern piece. But before I do that, I want to make sure that we have a large pattern piece on which we can trace that. So I'm going to come to my rectangle or that's our polygon, rectangle, ellipse. Do not go to internal or baseline. Go to the first tool. So let's take a rectangle or shortcut S and I'm going to create a large pattern piece on which we will create of which we will trace the pattern. So I just left clicked in the 2D window and I'm going to give this a, um, let's say 30 by 30 and you can see how big that is. And let that synchronize and bring that over. Accidentally created a second pattern piece. So I'm going to delete that. You can also see how big that is in the 3D window, I'm going to remove the random color. I'm going to make it monochrome. So you could, again, you could either left click and create a pattern piece, or you can, so I deleted this one, or you can, uh, with the polygon tool, you can just come and outline what you would like. So I'm going to create a large pattern piece that can, um, with the polygon tool, rectangle tool. So I'm going to create a large pattern piece that can fit um, enough of a uh, front and sleeve and back. And if I need more, I can always make it bigger. So the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in the pattern piece. Uh, we can do that in multiple ways. We can either click on the plus button and find out where that pattern piece is. And mine is called kimono. And you can click on that pattern piece and bring it in. Or you can also go to the property editor. So make sure that your width pattern, you're selected and make sure you have the object browser and property both open. So for this particular one, so I would like to come down to the texture, make sure that you clicked on that particular fabric and come down to, let me expand my window a little bit. I just want to be able to see the right side. You can move the bar down here, just like you can move this one here to see more or less. You can also make the property editor a little bigger or a little smaller. This is as far as this one would go. So let's look for the texture. So again, we have left click on the pattern piece on which we want to bring the tracing. We have selected it in the object browser. Then we come to the property editor, come down to texture, left click on texture and locate where your tracing, where the image of your pattern is. So mine is on my desktop. It's called Kimono. Double check that that's the piece and I brought it down. I cut out just the pattern that I want. I removed all of the writing and everything else. So I cut it down as close as possible to the pattern. So I'm going to click open and that's going to place it on my pattern piece. So I'm going to minimize the object browser property editor. So now we're going to work in the 2D window. So you see that Chloe brought in the pattern piece and multiplied it or created a print out of it. So what we want to do is we want to enlarge this. So I'm going to click on my edit texture tool. So we're going to work with the edit texture tool to 
enlarge the pattern piece so we can trace it. But we need to have some kind of a guide. We need to know how big that pattern piece is. So that means that either you have measurements on the original pattern piece and you know for this pattern piece, so let me enlarge it so you can see what this is, or I can also open it in the preview. Either in the original pattern piece, you need to know exactly what's your either center back, center front, long length of the sleeve, long of the shoulder, you need at least one measurement that you can reference that will correspond to the avatar. So if you're working from your own measurements, then you need to have an avatar that has your measurements. If you're working with this um, basic avatar, as far as we know, this avatar is size six. So we can approximate or you can measure your uh, mannequin or form at home or in school and approximate what the measurements would be. So let's say that I wanna make sure that the length of the center front is particular measurement from the neck to the waistline. You could also measure yourself and figure out what that measurement is. So let's say for me, let's say I want my center front to be about 20 inches from neck down to the waistline. So that means that it will cover uh, somewhere down to the hips. So let's input that measurement, 18 to 20 inches, whatever you like. So in order to do that, we will come to internal polygon line and we're gonna draw a line. I would put it uh, vertical to let's say one side and we're gonna orient the pattern. So I'm gonna make a line that is um, the measurement for me right now, I am gonna go for center front. So I'm gonna make this an 18 inch line. You can right click and add the length that you want and then click okay, or you can just left click, left click. So when you're done, click return and that will give you a measured line. So if I click on edit pattern and I click on this line, it tells me this is exactly 18 inch. So now we're going to come to edit texture and with the tool, make sure that you clicked on the pattern with the tool. First of all, I'm going to reorient. I'm going to rotate my pattern piece and align it with this internal line here. So I'm going to, I want to make this center front line 18 inches long because I've decided that my center front will be 18 inches long. So I have my guideline that is 18 inches long, which you can barely see it here. And I want to make sure that my pattern piece center front is 18 inches long. Okay. So I'm going to keep playing around with this until first of all, I just aligned it to this line and now I'm going to enlarge it and I'm going to keep moving it and enlarging it until the center front line on this pattern piece is exactly 18 inches. So I keep trying to align it here and that is my measuring guideline. So we're almost there. So a little bit smaller. Just a tiny bit bigger. So this might take might take a little bit of time and we can also, so that's good enough. And also I just want to rotate it a tiny bit. Okay. That's perfect. So now I know that my center front on this particular pattern piece is 18 inches. And now I don't need this line anymore. I can come and just delete this guideline because that was just a guide for me. So I don't need that line anymore. But now I see that my original uh, piece of fabric that I created is too small. So I'm going to come to the edit pattern tool and I'm just going to extend it more to make sure. And you can call Hold shift to make sure that you extend it on both sides. I'm going to extend it so it covers the pattern piece that I have. So I am selecting the two dots on this side, holding shift and just pulling out so that it creates an equal amount on both sides. And this is good enough. And I see that on this side is too long. So I'm just going to make it and bring it closer. So we're ready to trace this pattern piece. And 
what you can do also is come to uh, transform pattern A, select everything, right click on it and just lock, lock everything. So now it doesn't matter what I do, uh, nothing moves anymore. And once we have aligned and everything is in there, we don't want it to move anymore. So now we're gonna come to internal polygon line, select the internal polygon line or G. And with that tool, we're gonna trace around the shape. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One of them is you can, so I would zoom in really well. So depending on the pattern piece that you have, if you have a lot of straight lines, it's very easy to do. Uh, the trick is when you have curved lines. So if you're really good at tracing, I would make sure that you zoom in so you can see everything really well. You can, you know, start clicking on the corners and make sure that you're really well in there. And then come to every single corner and respect the lines and make sure that you're tracing as well as you can. So you can do this really precisely if you can. So when it comes to the curves, I would come to the middle, left click hold and create the curve, but it's very difficult to create a really good curve, right? So nothing is quite perfect. And as even as I'm trying to, I still see that I need adjustments to do later. So, and for the next curve, it will probably be, see right there in the upper right corner, I need more adjustments. So you can do that and later on you can add more curve points or what you can do is, so I just deleted all of this. The easier way to do this is to just do the straight lines and then come in later with edit, um, add, uh, with, uh, edit curvature, uh, edit curve, edit curvature, or edit curve point V, either one of these tools, and then add all of the curve points. So I will do that because it's much easier. So let's do this. So watch what I'll do here is, I'm gonna zoom in and make sure that I'm really well in the corner. Then I'm gonna go to the next corner and just do all of my straight lines. And then when I come to a curve, Instead of trying to recreate the curve, I'm gonna find more or less the middle of the curve and just click there with a the straight line and then go to the next corner. I'm gonna zoom in here and completely ignore the curves, but just give myself a little guide there so I know where I need to come in and create curves. So this will be a much easier and much faster way. So I'm gonna kind of more or less find the middle again. I'm gonna do it right at the notch and then come to the curve at the point here, I mean to the corner, not the curve. And again, I'm trying to be really precise and you can zoom in as much as you like and just really uh, decide if you're right in the middle of the line or on the outside of the line, whatever you do, just make sure that you're consistent. I try to be right in the middle of the line and that's fine. So here you can even go straight here or you can also try to find the middle and then go to the next corner. Uh, here there's a, they've created the dart, but we're gonna stitch that and come all the way to here. So I'm just gonna click there. And I'm gonna go straight and close it. So be careful to click exactly inside the dot and that's gonna close the shape and synchronize. So now you have a complete shape. Now our overall shape is traced. So I'm gonna to come to V, which is edit curvature, no, edit curve point V, because that's gonna let me add a point wherever I wanna create a curve. So, so now watch, I'm not clicking yet. I'm just watching exactly. I wanna be, for this particular one, uh, I wanna find the deepest uh, end of the curve here. And that's where I'm gonna place a point left click hold and just bring the whole line in. And you can also move and find where is the perfect curve here, where is the perfect um, curvature. When you're ready, release, and that recreated the curve line. And we can do this for every single line. And later on, we can also remove that middle point, for example, if you're not happy about it. But right now I like it. And uh, if you want to remove that middle point, click on edit pattern 
and right click on that point and convert to curve. So we're converting that point to curve. So I'll come back to V, which is uh, edit curve point and continue. We don't have any curves here. We have curves here. So again, I'm hovering over the line, left click hold and then bring the line in. And if the curve is not good enough, you can add a second point. So here it looks like I'm gonna have to add a second point and I'm gonna add it right here. And you can move around, see where it is. Okay, this one is here, perfect. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get all of my curves really good. So I might have to do this first. And I put a point there that I want to remove in a second. Actually, I can move it. So I'm going to come to edit curve, uh, to edit pattern, and just kind of um, move it or use the edit curvature and just add points wherever I like them. And again, if you don't want a point, you can also work with edit curvature and just curve the whole line. And that will let you uh, play with the whole segment. So, playing with uh, CMV, edit curve point and edit curvature, and eventually you will get the ideal shape that you like. And this one is still not perfect. Uh, I'm gonna push it a little bit more. I So this is much more in the middle of the black line. So I'm happy with that. And again, I'm gonna come to edit curve point of V. I like working with that because it lets me place a point and then when I left click, I can still manipulate where and how and what's gonna happen with that. So I'm gonna put this one here and then the next one here. And this one took three points, but now I'm happy with this. It looks like it's almost perfectly in there. And again, if it's not perfect, you can come in here and just push the line a little bit with C, edit curve. So I'm coming back to V, edit curve point, because that lets me add points. And I'm gonna do this one, and then one more here. And now I am happy with this. So this was bringing a pattern and then tracing it around. And now all we have to do is we need to actually bring this outline as a pattern outside. So when you finish with this, make sure that you're very happy with all of your lines. You're gonna come to trace or shortcut I. You're gonna select all of the lines or you can just grab all of them or you click on every single one of them to make sure everything is selected, or I just outline all of them, and it's only grabbing the internal lines because I locked the overall patterns, and now I'm gonna right-click on it, and I'm gonna trace as pattern. So again, I have the trace tool in my hand. You can see it highlighted in blue on the right side. I selected all of the lines that created the outline of this pattern, right-click, anywhere on them and trace this pattern left click on that and now you're going to have the pattern in your hand so i'm going to just place it here to the side and that is my new traced out pattern now if i want to see and add any kind of signage or any kind of internal lines i can still come and play with my edit texture tool and i can move this around to adjust so I can see, because remember, this creates a repeat in the background. And move that around so that I can see exactly 
maybe where my notches are, maybe where my um, internal lines are. For example, um, if this line here was actually a stitch line, I can now come to my internal polygon line and create a internal line that connects uh, pattern piece to pattern piece and click return when you're done. And I can also split this into two different pattern pieces, or I can use this internal line, for example, to place some kind of pattern annotation on it. So for that, I would need to open property editor, uh, select the internal line, make sure that that line is selected, and I can see my pattern annotation, so I can change this. So if this is a fold line, for example, I will choose the fold line symbol here. If this happens to be not a fold line, so with pattern symbol, I will come and I will delete that if I don't need any pattern symbols there. Um, if that happens to be a cut line, I place my internal line, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to cut it, right? And that's going to create two separate pattern pieces. So that's also a way to, if you have symmetric patterns or front and back, this will actually be much easier to simulate when I get to 3D because this large open pattern, it'll be very difficult to drape over um, the avatar. So I'm actually going to leave this as two different pattern pieces. Another thing that I highly recommend that is proper to do with patterns, come to pattern annotation and come and name all of your patterns. So this one is front. I'm going to do it in capital letters. And then for the back piece, for the back piece. And if you want to change it, I clicked on the smaller A or edit pattern. You can grab that and you can, let's say, rotate it or move it or do whatever you like to do or just move it anywhere you want. And for the back, I'm going to. So with the pattern rotation, I'm going to click there, type back. And again, with the smaller A or edit pattern annotation, I can grab that and move it. And maybe this one needs to get rotated. So it's proper naming. When you're done with this, um, you can also add all of your notches, for example. Remember, we have a notch tool up here called Notch, and you would come in and it would add all of your notches exactly where they're supposed to be. And that will help matching up your sleeves and help your sewing. So we have our notches. So create everything that needs to be created here. And when you're done with everything, then you can come in and delete. This was just, uh, it won't delete because it's locked. So I'm going to unlock all pattern lines and again, select it and delete it. And now we have our pattern pieces here. And again, I don't need these. Once you annotate and put all of your symbols and lines and everything, I don't need any of these uh, lines anymore. So obviously um, you can assign different fabric but I don't have any other fabric here. All, both of these have prints on them. So I'm gonna to come to fabric, left double click on that. I'm gonna open all the fabric choices and I'm gonna bring a default, see how this one says default for simulation. So either one of these is fine. Um, they don't have any particular specifications. One is a little heavier. They're both exactly the same thickness and everything. So I'm gonna bring one of these and either bring it to the object browser and assign it or just drop it on top. But here it dropped it only on one of the patterns. So I'll select the second one and then assign the default fabric to that one too. So now I have nice and clean patterns. So that was tracing a pattern from a book and adding all of the annotations and all of the signs and everything else.